work out surprisingly similarly. Uh, so we're going to look at G A over an enclosed surface, and this is going to be related now. I'm just going to leave this as some enclosed mass because this is the flux component. This is the source of the gravitational field. And some, for now, I'm going to call it constant G. There may be a 4 pi built into that number. We'll see. Okay. So, if we lay this out, then, constant G over any dA in any particular area. So we can say this is G times A is equal to this constant, whatever it is, times the mass enclosed, or G times 4 pi r squared is equal to this big C times mass enclosed. Okay. We solve for G, and G should be related to C, G, M enclosed over 4 pi R squared. Now that's what Gauss's law should look like when R is greater than big R, then the gravitational field should be C, G, M enclosed over 4 pi, or M E, excuse me, R squared. Because the mass enclosed will be the total mass of the Earth when you're outside. So this is a case where this has a radius of R, but we're looking at some distance R out here. And this implies that whatever this constant is, if I take that constant, C over 4 pi, that should be equal to this G value. Rule of wear in there. So, we can express this as G M E over R squared. So that's all over before. What's that? So that's where we were starting from before. Yes. Now that's all fine and good. Now, M enclosed is where we run into the issues. So over here, then, we have M enclosed. When, I'll write it over here. So, when R is less than the radius of the Earth, then G times A, I call it, should be equal to, we play the same game, however we want to write it. So for now I'm going to leave it as CG M enclosed, not ME, M enclosed. which should be CG times the mass of the Earth times R cubed divided by big R cubed. <coughs> this assumption is that M enclosed over R cubed is ME over big R cubed. Okay, so now this is G times A. So there's your 4 pi r squared. 
So if you solve for G, the magnitude of G should be this big CG, MER, over 4 pi R cubed. Here's your linear R. There we go. Okay. Everything else is constant. This is the form that is uh, analogous or consistent to what we looked yeah. at before. Yeah. Basically, this the differences between these two is that CG is the constant that one over epsilon naught would be in. In Gauss's law. Now CG is G times 4 pi. So this breaks down to G and E mm. over R cubed times R. So you know, we can express that in density, but this ends up being the form that is useful. And if we express the gravitational vector as a function of r, then we could say that it's going to be minus. The one problem is this is repulsive, not attractive. So there's probably an m minus built in here. g is opposite the direction. Uh, yeah, it's just a negative. So, bottom line, this expression here, we could write as a gravitational flux, which we could write as equal to this, but Better put a minus sign in there. I think this term will be intrinsically negative. So we need the minus sign over there. So this is what Gauss's law would look like for gravity. So the one little correction I have to make is that it's like a negative charge. So since mass is never negative, you have to put you have to force that in there. So it looks like that. So it's exactly the same form but it's just kind of intriguing the way it's set up. I think that uh, drilling a hole all the way through the earth is the next frontier for the bungee jumpers. Wouldn't that be kind of cool if you could make a, a bungee cord that was a million meters long?